Big earnings morning. UPS uh, mixed signals across the board. UPS not so great. GM great. What do you make of these results? Well, I think to me the more interesting one is that UPS missed on the top line, beat on the bottom line, and, and is up. Um, you know, it, it's telling me that investors are in a fairly charitable mood this earnings season. I think we, I think we got ourselves into one of these situations, which, which as you know, happens periodically before earnings season, where we kind of predict or expect the worst, and then when it's better than feared. Not, it doesn't have to necessarily be good. It just has to be not as bad. And I think that's sort of the result you're seeing in UPS. And of course, GM, where there is really solid, um, solid news coming out, well, of course, they, the market likes that. I, I guess then the question is, are we setting ourselves up to be burned? Right? What, ha what ends up happening in this kind of situation where things, sentiment's terrible going into earnings season, then the companies come out and beat, and then earnings season ends, <laughs> right? <laughs> and you still have a Fed out there that maybe is continuing to raise rates, or are they, I, you know, what, what's next? Well, this time it's tougher because the Fed's actually doing something right in right smack dab right, in the exactly. middle of earnings season. Because um, a lot of people have asked me, what do you do about the mega caps that are coming out later this week? And it's like, you can't really put on, you, you don't know necessarily where to put on that trade because where's, where's your at money option going to be? Um, I don't know because I have no idea what, what, how the market's going to react to the Fed. Um, and we could discuss that, at, you know, for an hour if we <laughs> wanted to. Um, and so this becomes very tricky. I think a lot of people are hinging on the guidance. I think the guidance in, in many cases is not as terrible as people feared. Um, and, I, you know, I think if we had a slew of really terrible guidance, that would be difficult also. But, but I think investors are really trying to grasp onto, you know, onto whatever hopeful pieces of the story they can take away from it. Are there deals to be found then, uh, given some of kind of the relative valuations that you would look at for even some of the mega cap tech names out there right now? Um, there's not a ton of, I, I don't see a ton of value out there. You know, I look around and I, I there's some names that are, that are trading fundamentally cheap, but mm -hmm. with tech stocks, it's a little weird because they're, they're so obsessed with the growth aspect. So I look at like an AMD, which is trading, you know, at, at you know, I think a PEG of 0.7 or, or a Google Alphabet, whatever we want to call it, you know, trading about 1.1. But these are, these are names that, that have absolute challenges, too. So, so it's, it's a little tricky because are we investing in growth or are we investing in, in, in value? It overlaps in a lot of cases. Actually, I wrote something earlier this, uh, I'm sorry, last week after Tesla earnings came out. I thought was fascinating. IBM, remember, was the Tesla of its day. Now it's before you know before any of us were involved in markets. Before most of you, were, before I think most of us were born. I was born. I don't know about the rest of you, <laughs> um, but you know. And and at this point, you know, they both beat on earnings and revenues, but but and both missed on cash flows. IBM got savage because their investors are no longer growth investors. They want that big fat dividend that IBM pays. Tesla investors could care less. They, don't, they just want to see the growth. And, and Elon Musk gave very rosy projections. And that's what they gravitated toward. We, you know, we had two you know, 10 plus percent days in a row as a result of it. So I think a lot of it really has to do with what is your mentality and who is your investor base as much as anything else. Um, which makes it tricky when you're looking for value in the tech sector because the tech investors aren't necessarily value investors. But the mentality only works as long as you have enough other people with the same mentality. In other words, if, if, if that rosy projection doesn't come true, if there still are enough Tesla boosters, say, or any other growth stock boosters, you're fine. But if they lose faith, then you're not so fine. So like, how long is this going to remain intact? through this year when the economy might be slowing, et cetera? That's really tricky. I mean, obviously, Tesla, the faithful, remain faithful. Um, you know, I do think a lot of what we've seen now with, with, you know, with Tesla may, being one of the poster children um, is, the, is the January effect on steroids. You know, think about how most of these stocks, many of these stocks got savaged last year. There were a lot of tax losses to be taken in 2022. You had stocks, big cap, market leading stocks down 50 50%, two thirds, things like that. You know, I'm thinking Amazon, Meta, et cetera. Um, and I think those are the ones, when they started leading the rally, I think it's underappreciated how much of it might have been a January effect um, mm -hmm. rather than the true broadening out. Now we're getting into some of, you know, Brian's favorite names leading the rally. And that, you know, that leads into a whole other aspect of, of speculation. Um, but I think a lot of it was, was January effect and just, 
sigh of relief, um, you know, from, from a wide range of investors. All right, we're going to have to start Brian's watch list as well. well. Uh, yeah, my, it's, being, it's being led by Carvana and Bed Bath Beyond, Steve. You know. uh, High quality names. High quality names. I put it on the T for you. <laughs> Interactive Brokers, Chief Strategist Steve Sosnick, thanks for braving the wintry mix to join us in studio. My pleasure.